very nice to be here and very nice to stretch our hands. Uh, seem like we're reaching to heaven and very nice to be able to say, I love you, Lord. But the truth is this, even before we can start to say, I love you, Jesus, or I thank you, Lord, God is already telling us uh, way ahead, son, I love you so much. And before we could say, thank you, Lord, God already sent his blessings towards us, much as it is today, amen? Okay, I would like us to look to the people in both of our sides, give them a beautiful smile, and tell them, I am happy to see you today in the house of the Lord. Can you? <laughs> Praise be to the living God. Uh, before we will go to the Word, there is a special announcement which I would like to uh, pass on to all of us. This is a... Uh, an exhortation which I would like to encourage more, especially to all of the parents around. We would like to invite in as much in the name of Jesus by next week, that will be first Sunday already of August. Please let us come and let us join church earlier. Because strictly by the grace of God, we would like to in as much start right on exactly at 9.30 our worship celebrations. Now, we will have some uh, new introduced or further innovations which we would like by the grace of God to introduce starting on Sunday. That is before our, uh, you know, singing our praises and our worship to the Lord, we would have like the most or a max of 30 minutes uh, Bible sharing where, you know, a series of design uh, and deliberate teachings uh, we, we geared up, you know, for the growth and the foundation of all of our parents and our adults in the church. We thank the Lord for the touch and uh, the passion that many of our young people do have uh, in Acts to praise God. And we would like to spread this, that it won't just be a handful or just, you know, the youth or the young professionals, but all of us to be going fiery and passionate as well unto the Lord. Amen? After all, it, it will still be two hours worship time, you know? Uh, God in the Old Testament, and we could be in, in the Old Covenant, God would strictly demand His people to see Him for a whole day. That was on a Sabbath, on the seventh day. Now Sunday, God, God we, we now in the New Testament, our rest is in the Lord Jesus. However, Sunday is our chance to worship the Lord. It will just be something only two hours. So, will that be, you know, an agreement between us? Let's let's do our best and let's show up to the Lord that we love Him. Amen? Amen. By the way, I would like to acknowledge the three kings in the church. Uh, I'm meaning C. Ian, C. Franz and Lance. They're helping me devising this, uh, you know, for the furtherance of the growth of our church. Now, God is good. <laughs> and all the time. I would like us to all stand up. We will go right away to the Word. I would like to preach a message today which I will entitle, indeed as, as it is, uh, as, it is, as it is spent from our passage, we're going to be, okay, there we go. First Chronicles chapter 16, 25 to 27. And rather exactly to what the psalmist, this, this is not from Psalms, but from Chronicles. However, this is a synopsis at the same time from one of the chapters in Psalms, where the writer himself wrote exactly strength and joy. Now, I'd like us to go with me in the reading. Okay, there you go. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And He is to be feared above all gods. For all of the gods of the peoples are worthless idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Here we go. Splendor and majesty are before Him. And the next line. Strength and joy are in His place. 
We are in the place of God today, amen? There are many of you are running out strength. You know, I, I called a vow to the Lord yesterday when I went on so far. I said, Lord, give me the strength. And there are many of us today are feeling sorrow, or rather sorry, or in, in, uh, in sorrow. Today, you are in the right place. May the Lord grant us strength and joy. Amen? Strength and joy are few of the most important things we need every day. It's a secret many do not know, but God revealed it in His Word. It is written in the Word of God. Everybody yells and shouts, Strength and joy! Strength and joy! If I can present this to you, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, strength and joy are not just cousins. Strength and joy are brothers. They are twins that we need them every day. That you cannot just have one without the other, or the other without the one. You need them both. You need, every one of us needs strength every day. I shall not be talking, uh, as, as we go further, I will not be, I'll not be talking only for a, for a one, you know, spectrum which is only spiritual or the others. Uh, a physical strength, but it's going to be the entirety, the totality. I mean, the full strength of God. One cannot just have strength, and at the same time, do not have joy. God would like to give them, you know, together at once, and then, you know, as a package. That we, at the same time, strong and are happy. But of course, not on the other hand, only happy, but are weak. God would like us every day to come and draw as our source to Him. I'd like us to raise both of our hands and close your eyes and say, God is my source. Come on. Tell Him, Lord, I draw my strength from you. We don't seem to be, you know, saying strength. Let's raise both of our hands back and say, I draw my strength from you, Lord. You are my source. Let's give God a cup of praise. Come on. Never ever forget that. Do not draw your strength from a man because man can fail. Do not draw your joy from any luck in this world because our joy, the source of our joy is the Lord. And God doesn't run, run dry. God doesn't run now. And when you come to God, when you approach the Lord, God doesn't turn His back away from you. And God never says no. I just so realize that as the, the pace of my life gets faster today. You know, not easy to balance many things at the same time, but I am enjoying. I'm finding that man indeed, as he trusts the Lord, as he rely on the Lord, he can do multitasking. And at the same time, still are able to enjoy them. But there are some times, and maybe God the Lord allows them as well, that we can be dependent unto the Lord. That we can come and realize that we ain't Superman. That we too, you know, are bound in this human bodies that we are bound to trust the Lord and to believe God, to draw unto Him as our source every day, every single day. I tell you yesterday, this is not just on, on a Saturday yesterday, but this is every day. And uh, I went home after our recording for our program this morning. Uh, Rijay drove me to the house, and as soon as I arrived in the house, I, I, I felt like I wanted to drop. And I just wanted to, you know, uh, bend, bend and uh, cover myself. Uh, with, with a blanket in our bed. I just felt I was totally sucked out with strength yesterday, Saturday. And, uh, you know, I asked Sister Delia, I would, just, I would just like to rest, I would just like to sleep. And I slept for maybe more than, uh, more than an hour. Then after waking up, you know, because uh, I still would have to make my outline for my afternoon's program later. After, after a chest of more than an hour, I still felt, you know, tiredness inside. You know, my flesh, 
Then I began to call on to God. I, you know, I started to connect myself to the Lord and I cried out to God, Lord, I don't want to be sick. Last Monday, I was yet recovering for a flu. If you could hear me last Sunday on, on my, uh, my uh, delivery on, on my message, I tell you, I wasn't feeling well already then at the time. So I was talking to God, Lord, please. Do you want to be sick? Tomorrow is Sunday and Lord, where are you? I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, God is not lost. Amen? Amen. But it's just alright to call on to God when you feel like you're in an oblivion to ask, Lord, where have you been? Where are you? Actually, it's not God lost. It's your emotion. It needs to be connected with God. Amen? Amen? It's like a hide and seek. You know, God is around, but God wanted you to seek Him. God wanted you to chase Him. That is why a child of God is supposed to be a God chaser. Not a things chaser, but God chaser. Hello, amen. 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 You know, I was I was there in a bit, calling unto the Lord and connecting myself unto God, and little by little God restrained me and God started to give me joy. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, if there are people in the world world that are supposed to be happy every day. To their max, ladies and gentlemen, they are not your neighbors. People to be the happiest are you. Amen. Amen. Because of Christ inside your heart. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. <laughs> it is a secret, as I wrote there, that many do not know. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, it's something which is a mystery that can only be found, can only be discovered in the Word of God. You see how, how people respond when you give them the Lord, when you share them the gospel? They turn their backs around. They shrug their shoulders. You know, they discount God. And they will say, oh, that's an, uh, an old-fashioned, but it's not for me. But you see, their lives are in a mess. You know, they, they're running out of, uh, what is this, uh, anchors in their lives. They're, they're, they're losing holes. If not to all of the aspects of their lives, some or many aspects, aspects of their lives. And they don't have actual joy. Per, perhaps what they had is, you know, worldly happiness. Happiness that are temporal only, you know, to alcohol or to drugs or uh, to friends. I mean, not real friends, but friends that are, you know, we, we call spiritual leeches to, to suck you out instead. They're not genuine, they're not real. For genuine, genuine, genuineness can only be found in the presence of God. People, when they are attaching into the presence of God, they turn as well to be genuine. Amen? Amen. I'd like you to look to the next person beside you and touch that brother, touch the sister. Stay, tell that brother, tell that sister, I shall be genuine to you, brother. Come on. Let's give God a cup of grace. They're not finding the secret. They're not finding the key. Turning their backs away, around from the Lord. But little, all of these people are knowing that the secret is in God. Amen? Amen. Things that can be done for hundreds of years, they only can be done, not by you. But by the power of God, it just his it just is in just in his one you know single snap of his powerful fingers. And God can award those to you. God can reward those to you as we as we trust in Him, as we believe in Him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The the world is lonely that we need. The world is lonely that we need renewal. Which God knows since time eternity past. See you know. I like I like it to you. Turn to someone else and tell the brother, tell the sister, the world is lonely. Tell me when when your life started to have colors. Remember? You know, they only started when you gave your life to God. Life was a total gray, if not a pitch black darkness, 
pry your way, way pry before you gave your life to God. And there, were, there it was. You know, as we, could, as we continue with our journey, you know, there are few of us, sometimes alone, the enemy as we, as we battle, you know, our, uh, our, our service and our, uh, you know, our giving of our lives to the Lord, somehow, there were those, there were those some, some curves in our, in our journey that we're not able to hold or make our stand that there are few of us that we sleep back and for a while there was that distance between your God and to you. Now you tell me in those times when you were or we were away from the Lord, how was it? Ladies and gentlemen, it must be a lonely life. Because real joy and real strength only proceeds out from the presence of God. Amen? Amen. The Bible said, strength and joy are in this place. Strength and joy are only under the shadow of the Lord, under the shadow of His wings. Away from Him are all weaknesses. Away from Him are all sadness and sorrows. It's only in the arms of the Lord when you come. God wipe, the, God wipe the tears away from your face. And God replaces them with smiles. God replaces them with real joy. As I said, they only can be found in the presence of God. Because they cannot be found anywhere else. Only in God. See that? It's only in God. Thus, when we run away from Him, strength and joy are few of those that soon we lost. Amen? Amen? Please do not run away from God. Okay? Not, not things, not worldly things, not money, or not people. Many a times, the devil would push us into situations where we feel like tempted, you know, to please people. You know, uh, as, as I was driving, I, I need, you know, to, to get always uh, his attention or her attention that, you know, I can have a good footing all the time. I can always have the advantage wrong. Because if that is how we see things or we arrange things, we are distinct to fail. But rather, if we look up to God and every day, every single day, the focus and uh, the motives of our hearts is always to please the Lord, to make God happy. God will be the one and He is able. He's able to arrange everything, you know, for our favor and for our good. God arranges the steps of the righteous, isn't it? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's give God a clap of praise. <laughs> Have you experienced that? And you know what I am saying? Where God will just surprise you one day. That those you wish, those you uh, did think, you know, on the deepest recesses of your heart and in your mind, that even your spouse or your best friend doesn't know. It's just you. I mean, your spirit and your soul. But God saw them as you pleased Him. You come and wake up one day and realize that those that you want, that you, you are, those that you desire, are there before you, are there, are there, uh, you know, at your door. You, all, you only have to go there and to pick them. Why are those happening? Ladies and gentlemen, because the pleasure of the Lord is to give the kingdom of God to you and to me. God wanted you, you and me, every day to be happy. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a clap of praise. Come on. Mark my word, by the grace of God, because this word is not mine, but the Lord's. There are many of us who never had a house since before. And you dream and you so desire, and the Lord so them. Whether you sell, because anytime and any one day, God will gonna surprise you with a, such a beautiful house. Amen. 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 Many of us so desire with one expensive and fancy car. It's not bad. It's not even. It's not sin even. Seek the Lord first. Please, God first. Because all of these 
will just be added unto us. Amen? Amen. And one day you will be surprised. You only ask perhaps, you know, for the version 1 and God shall give you the version 5. Amen? Amen. Amen. And God will be seeing to it that you will have your tears to fall from your eyes. But they will not be tears of sadness, but tears of joy. Amen. Amen. And He will be there to hold His hand key to wipe those, to those tears away. Tears, not tears of sadness, but tears of joy. Amen? Amen. A woman, in all of her life was, you know, a woman of sadness. Her name was Hannah. I Are you still there? Amen. In 1 Samuel. <clears throat> Why she was sad? Because all she wanted in her life was to have a baby. But it seems that the Lord had turned His back away from her. That to the extent she would already quarrel her husband by the name of Elkanah. That is the Old Testament. Elkanah had two wives. Uh, the other wife had, had born uh, Elkanah, the husband, many children already. That Hannah felt like, as others also would, all the time, you know, accuse her God. You know, turn her back away already from you. You're a forsaken. I mean, you're a barren woman. God, God forsakes you. And it, it was beyond that she would have to find every single day a woman of sorrow. But you know, when you come to God, He will turn the sadness, the sorrow into joy and real joy, genuine joy. Amen. Amen. One morning, on a certain feast, she was laying there, you know, in the presence of God at the tabernacle, falling her tears and starting to pray. You know, the Bible said, her mouth now moving. But no words coming out from her mouth. Because of her sadness, there are no words coming out from her mouth already. She was talking and communicating, communicating to God only with her, with her mind and her heart. And the high priest, by the name of Eli at that day, when, when she saw Hannah, with those actuations, only mouth talking, no words coming out, the high priest thought that maybe Hannah was drunk early on, nine in the morning, and started to scold her. Hannah would have to justify, Sir, your woman is a woman of sorrow and sadness. I am here because of this creation. I am asking God for His favor. And the man was blue. And the high priest said, you see, when the Lord comes and blesses, He uses, He uses, you know, to touch, to touch the people, He uses His servants. Because the Bible said, blessings are in the mouths of the Levites. Now, uh, Eli was the high priest of the year. He said to the woman, oh, is that so? You go home and be sad no more. Because to what are the intentions of your heart, God will answer them. Following year, you will come back. Or following year, rather, you will see the answers of your prayer. She went home with such assurance in her heart. Because faith is the substance of things. Hope for the evidence of things that are not seen. When you pray, that's what our experience is. When we ask, we don't see an outright result, out, outright results or something you know, palatable before you. But you know that you know there is that assurance inside your heart. You go home happy. The woman was happy. And one evening the Lord started to contract. You know, the womb of the woman. The womb of the woman that was closed, God started to open. Indeed, following year, a baby was born and she was very happy. And she, the woman, see, Hannah named her son to be Samuel. In other words, I see God in you, or the joy of the Lord is in this child. Hello, are you with me? Amen. For seven years, he never had returned, she never had to return to, uh, to Jerusalem, to the city of Jerusalem to worship God. But on the seventh year, after weaning her only in one child, after seven years, she went back to the city, bringing along baby Samuel. And the mother suing, suing uh, Samuel with an effort. Effort is the prescribed, you know, garment of the, uh, uh, prescribed priestly garments of uh, the Levites. Samuel wasn't a Levite. He coming from another tribe, but, you know, uh, the woman was just very happy. And they had the, 
reacquaintances of the high priest, the high priest could not recognize her anymore. Only until when Hannah would have to introduce herself. I was the woman, oh, I remembered you. Now, who's this little baby? The high priest was touching the head of uh, Samuel. And the woman said, this is the boy. This is the result of my prayer. This is the result of my joy. She is my joy. Amen? When your desire will come to pass, they will be your joy. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like you to look to someone else and pop the shoulder and say, you're up to something God is about to bless you. Come on. You're up to something God is about to bless you. Now there are these two things I would like to speak about. Now please. Number one. Strength and joy are contagious. When a person is in his zest, when you are alone with him, I tell you uh, what he has will go through will go through you. In other words, uh, will have a transference over you. A person who is, you know, happy and a person who is, you know, uh, in his zest, what he has will. Uh, will contaminate you. Everybody say, say amen. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, at the same time, e equivalent to strength and joy, also discouragement and sadness. Uh, that is why we need to be careful whom we are to hang out or give our lives either. Or give our lives either of which we get. Uh, we need to be very careful. I like us to say in that line saying, we need to be very careful. Whom we are to hang out. Huh? Because what they have, either of which we can get, if they are people of strength and people of joy, we can be transferred strength and joy from them. But it, it, it will be an alas something, it will be an unfortunate something if whom you are getting along with every day are people of discouragement is that you know people of sorrow even if they are blessed they still are sad I'm very sad today because you know our dish is just this our dish only fried chicken our dish only uh, Lechon or Pakshiu, you know. I wish you can have more. <clears throat> By the way, when rain comes, say praise the Lord because we need rain, amen? Amen. When there's no rain and there's sunshine, say also praise God because we need sunshine. Huh? But when there's sunshine and rain at the same time, say as well praise the Lord. <laughs> Because they, they speak of the balance of the goodness of God. You know that story I, I love to relate? A man who is, uh, who is sour every day. Now look to the next person beside you and say, I, I'm not that guy, come on. <laughs> Tell a person, I'm not that guy. Now this person always whine every day. Please stop it. We are relative. Every day we must thank the Lord, amen? In all circumstances, in any situation, find a way to thank Him, amen? If you got a bigger, thank God for the blessings. If you have it, following day will be a sun, sunny day. He was about to leave and he, when it was sunny day and humid, warm and hot, he started again as he did yesterday to curse. You say, oh, it's a bad day because today is a sunny day. Well, this is just but the story. God decided after hearing, uh, hearing the man, he was mixed up. The Lord, well, God cannot be confused. Now, well, it's just a story. God was mixed up. And he decided, okay, following day, I'm going at the same time to bring rain and sunshine. Indeed, there was rain and sunshine, and the man was, before about to leave, he started again to curse. Similar to the first and the second day, he said, oh, it's a bad day. Because it rains and it's a sunny day at the same time. And the Lord, as I said, it's just one story. The Lord get to be more confused because he didn't know what and how to please the man. Now, 
I like us to leave thy head up and say, Lord, I'm not that guy. Let's give God a club of praise, amen? But I mean in that effect, that would like us to be happy every day. There was the story of the prodigal son. All of us are familiar with the story. When he was in the presence of his father, he was a happy boy every day. But later on, he wanted to have an expedition. He wanted to have some other experience. Then he asked the father, I'm leaving. Now I tell you, calamities way happen and way starting to happen. It's, it's not when we are there in the middle of, uh, you know, uh, in the middle of, the middle of a storm. Calamities start to happen when we ask God, I'm leaving. When we, when we start to step away from His presence. And that's what happened to the prodigal son. He went to the wrong, the wrong crowd. He hung out with the wrong people. And he started to be discouraged. He started to be sorrowful. He started to grow his beard. He started to grow his mustache. His hairs. He looked older than his age. You know, uh, plus, plus the poverty and uh, the no friends already. And he smelled already one morning. He just thought about his father. No, it was one evening. He thought about the goodness of his father. The following day, he decided. He, went, he decided to return back and to go back to the father. And the father accepted him. That's how things are. You know, when we run away from the Lord, or when we hang out with the wrong crowd, with the wrong, uh, the wrong people. Amen? Are you with me? Amen? Amen. God wants us to be strong and happy every day. <laughs> happy and strong spiritually emotionally and physically I like us to yell with me say is spiritually, spiritually. Emotionally. emotionally and physically praise be to the living God being a pastor I need this because it's it's my calling and it's my profession to be able to share spiritually emotionally and physically strength and joy no, I cannot afford to go run dry. I cannot, I cannot afford, you know, to have nothing inside of me. Now, it's not just one of the recourse, but it is the only choice. My only choice is that every day I must draw my source to the real, uh, to the real origin, and who is God. And God is very, God is very good, and this is, this is uh, the goodness, ladies and gentlemen. God doesn't say no. And God doesn't, God, God doesn't run dry. The provision of the Lord doesn't go dry. Amen? Because, you know, uh, our source is inexhaustible. Amen? Let's give the Lord a couple of praise for that. Now, we go to the second. Strength and joy are freely given by our God. Say the word freely given. Freely given. Now I didn't hear you. Let's shout them louder. Say freely given. Freely given. But you know, men cheaply forsake them. I'd like us to read, please, Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 to 1 to 2. It's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It reads, The compassion of the Lord. Come everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. He who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. In other words, God is inviting us. He wanted us to buy, and the Bible said there, bread, bread and meal. He wanted us to buy both of them for free. Now in effect, it is like strength and joy. God is inviting us, come on my child, you buy strength, you buy joy, and you buy them for free. You see, God is really pointing. The Lord knows really how to, uh, to be able to deliver, you know, a line to get our attention that you can savor the sweetness of it. 
Imagine the Lord says, He's selling it, but He is He's selling it and He's selling it for free. Amen? And in effect, the Lord is saying there, I'm giving it all for free for you. I mean, in as much as you want, you can get, because the Lord has no limits. Amen? Amen. But you know what? Very sad, as the Lord is offering joy and gladness for free, people insist to reply, God, no. Funny because where June and I tries in a week go and sell juices. Funny because this there are they are just you know not not many, but a handful of people who would say no. We would offer our product cheaper and uh, a little advantage to them because they will not carry. We go and deliver them for free. Cheaper and free delivery. And you know what? Where June and I agree on this. Our juices are anointed, isn't it, Priya? They're healing in our juices. <laughs> because the ones who are making those are children of God and proceeds part of those go to the kingdom. I mean, God's blessings must be in there, amen? Amen. We're now in the production for more than 13 years already. Every time I see AI, every time I see Malil, they are testimonies of the goodness of God. Part of their education came from the proceeds of this industry. Going back, going back to the story, you know there are these arrogant people or prideful individuals say, no, we would just buy and name another product. Now logic dictates, when they would go to another product, they would have to go and travel downtown, carry them, if they don't have, they don't have cars, they would have to really, you know, laboriously, labor, laboriously carry them and call for a tricycle and would have to go carry them really uh, in loads. They would have to spend for their fares and everything and, and strength. And, uh, you know, logic-wise, there they no, they no explanation there. I mean, there is no justification that you can say it is for their advantage. But they will still insist no to us. And we smile back and say, anyways, that's your decision. God bless you. For me, in the, in the 13 years uh, of the training, God, God taught me, a, a person would say no to what I offer. Now, with regards to the juice, I would politely say, thank you, God bless you. And by the way, turn my back and go to the next door. Now, way before, in the earlier, earlier years when we started, I easily become affected. And you know, the effect of people telling me no, that what I'm offering is only juice, would, would stay in me until the afternoon and steal my joy and go even following day. Now listen to me, here is wisdom. Do not allow situations around you to affect you ever. Not a minute, not a second, no, nothing, never. Amen? Amen. You spend your day, every minute of your day, to rejoice in the presence of God. Because your day in this world is not a thousand years. Amen. Maybe the most 80 or God to bless us 85. Now I talked to a man and I told him after his birthday, he was like 45, 47. May the Lord bless you with another 100 years. He was in a shop. I don't want to leave 100 years more. All I wanted is maybe 25 years, 20 or 25 years. Ladies and gentlemen, the point is this, God wanted us every day to spend personally in our relationship with God, with our family, in joy. And then as we are happy every day, God doesn't want us to, you know, spend happiness or joy. You know, city as well. These two, both of this, as I mentioned a while, and I'm closing now, strength and joy are not just cousins. Strength and joy are brothers. Strength and joy are twins. When you come to God, ask both of this. Ask the Lord, give me the strength today and give me joy today. Amen? And God is offering this. God offering both of this this morning. So I'm not coming to Him today and telling Him, Lord, I'm running out of strength. Lord, I'm a little sad. Would you come and comfort me? There are how many of us who would like to ask that from the Lord? Amen? Amen. I'd like us to stand before Him. It's all right.